All right, 8.3, evaluating logarithms. Some properties of logarithms where the base of the logarithm is greater than zero and the base is not equal to one, we can infer that the log of base A of one is equal to what? Well, when you think about it, we've got A to the power of something is equal to one. You should note that right away the answer to that will be, so think again, a to the power of something is equal to one. The only possibility is if that something is equal to zero. Let's try another one. Log of base a of a to the x. What does that mean? It means a to the power of something is equal to a to the power of x. Well, we have two powers that are equal with the same base. That means the exponents must be equal. Therefore, a to the power of something is equal a to the power of x means that that something is equal to x. So these two here are very good properties to note. Let's look at another one. a to the log a of x. What does this mean? Well, if we were to take the log of both sides, for example, log of a, convert this to a log, log base a of something is equal to log base a of x. So we converted this exponential form to logarithmic form. We can see that log of base a is equal to something. This is the something. Is equal to log base a of x. Well, they're both log a's, so they're both logs that are equal to each other with the same base. So that means the arguments are equal. This is equal to this. Therefore, the answer to this is x. So again, we have three properties that are very good to remember that we can automatically get an answer for. What about this one? Well, this is something that's inferred. Log of x means that the base is 10. So if the base is not written, you can assume that the base is 10. An example that we see is in square root. In a square root, we know that inside the little index that there's a 2. So let me just go over and show you that. We know that when you write the square root of something, that equals x to the half. Why? Well, this 2 that all of a sudden shows up here is actually the index that is here. We call this the square root, but we never write a 2 here. So that's the idea of this. When I write log of x, that means log base 10 of x. Just something to note there. All right, let's keep moving forward. Example 1, evaluate without a calculator the following questions. And here they are. Here's a bunch of them. And let's evaluate them. First one, log of base 1, what's the answer? Hopefully you all think 0. Because, let's show here, if I make log of 1 is equal to x and I convert that to exponential form, it says 10 to the power of x is equal to 1. That means x must equal 0 because 1 is the same as 10 to the power of 0. So the answer to this, automatically if you see a question like this, is 0. Okay, you do not need to show me this red part. It's just proving it to show you why that is the case. Log base 3 of 3 to the x. You should know based on the logarithmic properties that we just covered that that should equal x. All right, here, next one is also equal to x. And the next one, we're going to look at what's going on here. Well, here, what we've got is log base 3 of 3 cubed minus log base 2 of 2 to the 6. Why am I doing this? Well, if I convert them to have the same bases, what happens is using the log properties like this one, I know the answer to this is just going to be 3. And it's going to be the answer is just going to be 3 for this one and 6 for this one because they have the same bases. So the bases cancel each other out so that we're left with just the exponents. 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Let's look at the next one. Log base 5 of the cube root of 5. Well, 
theta should be converted to the base of 5 so that we have five, log base 5 of 5 to the 1 third times log base a half to the 8. So we need to change this 8 to be a base of a half. Well, it's going to be 1 half to the negative 3. Why is that the case? I want you to think about this before we actually move forwards. Why is this the case? Well, folks, 8, 1 half, we know is the base. We know 2 to the power of 3 gives us 8, but 1 half to the power of 3 gives us 1 eighth. To flip that, we need to put a negative to get just 8. So we do that, and we get 1 third, because the log 5 of 5 canceled to get 1 third, and log half a half canceled to give us negative 3, and we multiply those two to give us negative 1. All right, so these are some simple questions so that you should know how to calculate a log. Now, example two. Use the graph of f at x equals 2 of x above to estimate the following values. So, what's important here is we're going to estimate these values by looking at the graph. Log base 2 is 7, so this is my, this is 2 to the power of something gives you 7. That's what it's asking here. 2 to the power of something gives you 7. So if you were to go to 7 along the, and the 2 to the x graph and go across here, we could find out what that exponent is that gives us 7. And that will be approximately, now again, we went across here, we see the values here, so it's between this and this line. Going down, that's 2.75 and 3 closer to 2.75. So let's say 2.8, roughly, all right? The next one, we're looking here using the 2 to the x graph, 2 to the power of something is equal to 0 0.75. So we need to find 0 0.75 over here, go across to the graph, and we see it's approximately somewhere in this range. Close to this number, but not exactly. It's like halfway between here and here, so we're looking at a value of approximately negative 0 0.4, okay? Not exactly negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.4, somewhere in that range. Again, you're approximating it, so I'm going to give an answer that is pretty close. Let's look at the next one, log base 2 of 19 over 4. Well, what's 19 over 4? Well, that is 4 and 3 quarters, so right here. Go across here, and the graph hits it here. What is the y x value, which will turn out the answer that we're looking for? And we say it's about 2.25. All right, so these are all the values here. We estimated by looking at the graph. All right, let's move forwards. Example number three, the half-life of a radium is 1,620 years. If a lab has 3 grams of radium, how much will there be after 100 years? How many years will it take until the lab has only 2.7 grams of radium? Alright, so the first part is how much will there be after 100 years? Alright, how do we set this question up? Well, there are two parts, so we're going to do the first part. And the first part is a certain amount of radium. Now let's go through what this is. Let's just cover this up. Three grams of radium is what we start with. Half-life, you put half as your base to the power of, and it's a certain number of time over 1,620. This 1,620 is the half-life to get there. So we need to know what the T value is, all right? T for this is 100. So we need to know the A value, plug it in, and we get 2.8743. What does that mean? That means that there's this many grams left after 100 years. This much radium is left. Let's look at the next question. Part B says how many years will it take until the lab has only 2.7 grams of radium? Well, we know it's got to be more than 100 years because it's 2.8743. 
So we know it's going to be 100 more, more than 100 years. Let's calculate how we get that. Well, 2.7 is equal to 3 times half to the power of t over 1620. We divide by 3 on both sides. And then we take the log of both sides to bring the exponent down. And so it will be 2.73. So we convert this to a log equation. We can convert this to a log equation or we take the log of both sides. Either way, you'll get the same answer. So this time, we took, we converted this to a log equation. So log base of a half of 2.7 over 3 is equal to the exponent. Multiply by 1620 and you get 3 is equal to, now let's go back, sorry, one second. We're just going to go back to that question for a sec. Okay. And I want people to see the different ways of presenting this question. And it's going to be important for you to see this. So we're just going to go backwards just a little bit so you can see this. So I convert it to a log statement first. And I find out it's going to be about 246 years to get 2.7 grams of radium. Converting the exponential equation to a logarithmic statement using inverse. But... How else could you have done this question and still gotten the right answer? Well, folks, that would mean you would have to take the log of both sides and then bring the exponent in front and divide by log of a half. When you divide by log of a half, you'll end up with a value of 246 years. So the exact same answer we got in the last question, I just did a different way and you get the same answer. So either way, I guarantee you'll get the same answer and you'll get the full marks. All right, that's the end of this video, folks. Take care. Have a good night.